Welcome to the Seth Thibodeau Show, featuring the head coach of Nickel State University Baseball, Seth Thibodeau. Today's program is presented by the Sports Medicine Center of Thibodeau Regional, dedicated to patient-centered excellence. The Seth Thibodeau Show is also sponsored by Rouse's Supermarkets. You're either local or you're not. And by People's Health, your Medicare health team. Hello and welcome to the Seth Thibodeau Show presented by the Sports Medicine Center of Thibodeau Regional. I'm Mike Wagenheim alongside the head coach of the Colonels, Seth Thibodeau. Coach, welcome to the program. Great week of baseball under your belts. Yeah, we, we did. We had a good run at it. We have, we've been uh, playing well the last couple of weeks, and I'm excited about that heading into an off weekend. Uh, I'm excited to see our guys you know, turn the corner and get in the hide at the right time. You guys have won eight of your last ten games now heading into this week. What has led to this string of success for you guys? I think our guys are understanding the importance of this time of the year. They're starting to feel it. Things are starting to warm up a little bit. They understand the stretch run. Uh, we're, you know, we're only two or three games back and behind the uh, first place. So I think they're just understanding the importance of it. And they're starting to really get hungry for it. And our bats are coming alive. Our upperclassmen are starting to play good baseball. And, and they're just kind of feeling it this time of the year. You fell in non-conference action to Tulane. Really didn't didn't play well at all in that one. You had to come back on really short rest after a trip to Monroe overnight. You play a day game. You eke out an extra inning victory, a, a gutty effort, and then you have to go up to Conway, Arkansas, longest trip of the year over spring break. You wind up taking two out of three from the Bears, the back two, in fact, after you didn't play all that well on Friday. This team really showed some ability to bounce back. They respond. They respond to adversity. They've done it all year. They've done it all fall. They did it. When we challenged them early in the fall, and, and it kind of that's been a characteristic of this team all year long, and that's a really good thing to have. Uh, they don't get phased by much, but at the same time, we need to turn the corner and not put ourselves in, in tough situations. Maybe, uh, you know, go for that first one. So, uh, but that's part of the season. That's part of having a lot of new players. Uh, but to get through those moments, you, you have to have upperclassmen and leadership, and I start, I'm starting to see it. Central Arkansas have been putting together a pretty good campaign. They were only a few games out of first place entering the weekend, but you have the top three pitchers in the Southland Conference. This is something going on in no other league in the nation. The one, two, and three best ERAs in the league all belong to the Colonel Weekend rotation. That's something very impressive. It's very impressive, and our players are starting to, to really see it. It's real to them right now, and I think if we can start swinging the bats the way we've been doing that the last week or so, uh, this team's got a chance to make a serious run. We're going to take a look at highlights from this past weekend at Bear Stadium in Conway. Nichols looking to get something going in the first against right-hander Connor Gilmore. But after a two-out error and hit, Gilmore gets Mark Frazier to pop up. The Colonels, this is Friday night, went just two for 11 with runners on base here in the series opener. Meanwhile, in the bottom of the inning, self-inflicted damage. Tyler Langley leading off against Ryan Deems. Kyle Reese bounce, uh, handles a bouncer at third, but throws it away, and that opened the door for UCA. The Colonels failed to record an out on a sack bun after this, and then Chris Townsend would cash in. Joey Morales makes the sliding stop, but there's no play to be made here. Langley scores, and the Bears are up one to nothing. Three batters later, runners at the corners. Joel Penny drives it deep enough to left to get the job done, bringing home Wesley Hoover. It's a pair of unearned runs in the frame for UCA. Now, Deems would come back and retire nine of the next ten before getting out of a jam in the fourth, but UCA tacking on runs in the fifth. The wild pitch here is only Deems' second all year, but it allows Matt Anderson to score. Later in that same at-bat, Penny slugs and offering into the right field corner. The double would chase in Braxton Phillips. Deans goes five and a third innings, allowing five runs, three earned on 11 hits with six strikeouts. He had dominated this league all year, really the first time he's looked human this season. On to the sixth after a Langley RBI double makes it 5 nothing. Townsend looks to execute the safety squeeze. Not a great bunt. Jason McDonald goes to first, and then Langley took off for home. He misses the plate, and after a little waltz here with Christian Correa, it goes down as a 1-3-2 double play. But Travis Hall delivers a single to drive in two in the seventh before Gilmore finishes off the Colonels. Alex Shermer going down looking to end it. Gilmore with his third consecutive complete game win. A four-hitter. Nichols falls 7-0. Tanner Vanderveer finished up with a half of the Colonel Hits bullpen 
did a really nice job in this one. UCA just took advantage of they, mistakes. They played well. They they absolutely took advantage. They came out hungry on Friday night, and we weren't quite hungry enough. I think we were still kind of, you know, sitting back on the road trip. We let the bus get to us a little bit. I thought Deems competed. We didn't make some plays that we should have. You know, a couple of uh, balls that were given hits and probably could have been plays made up the middle and some, you know, we shouldn't have spotted them an early first inning, you know, a couple of runs, but didn't play well. Uh, I was disappointed in our effort there, and especially on Friday night when, when toughness is, is, you know, is, is important. Uh, we weren't ourselves that night, and I challenged them for, for the next day, and, and we certainly responded. You certainly did, and, and the, the thing about it was, you know, Ryan Deems, such a great Friday night pitcher. You figure you got that one in the bag. It just mm -hmm. goes to show you, you got to bring it. You have to bring it every day, and especially on the road in a tough environment. You know, things, you know, he made some pitches. We need to make plays behind him, but at the same time, this is baseball. Nothing is easy. You can watch Major League Baseball every day, and the guys with the best stuff sometimes get hit too. So nothing is a given in, in this level. And so you have to, and it keeps you hungry and it keeps you humble. And that's what I like about it. And, and certainly, Deems will get, a, you know, he's going to make him want to work a little bit harder for the next one. But you got to tip your cap to Connor Gilmore as well. That guy came out and, uh, and just fired the ball. Oh, he, was, off he was special for them. He, he set the tone, he had a good tempo going every time we had a chance he would just shove it shut the door on us and, and so you know it, we needed maybe a big two out hit early and we couldn't get it and then when you have to rely on two out hits it, it gets really tough especially against a good arm on Friday night. Coach it seemed like though you guys uh, took a heed of your message after the game your players certainly did and they came out and played one of their better games of the season on Saturday. I was anxious to see how we would react to a, 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 you know a, a playing the way we did on Friday just w without any fire um, and we definitely responded. I saw a hungry baseball team. I saw some guys that have been in the program for a while step up and do what they're supposed to do, and that was great to see. Well, we're going to take a look at Saturday's game. In the first inning, Darius Knight and Kyle Reese both singled before Justin Smith drew a walk. So the bases are loaded for Alex Tucker, who has taken full advantage of his limited opportunities this year. He gaps the Brandon Hagerler offering into right center. Three runs score. It's just what the doctor ordered here as Smith slides in safely ahead of the relay. What a way to set the tone for the rest of the evening. UCA responds in the bottom of the inning as Tyler Langley leads off with his fourth home run of the year. In fact, that's the first gopher ball served up all season by Colonel Lefty Grant Bourne. That made it 3-1. to one. But Bourne does not allow any of the next 10 batters to reach cleanly. Meanwhile, the offense provided plenty of cover. Big two-out hits throughout the day, including another Darius Knight hit. The slicing line drive scores David Zorn. 4-1 to one Colonels. Knight rolled his ankle coming around first. He'd be all right, though. He was one of seven Colonels with multiple hits. Bottom two, an error to start the inning, but Bourne cleans it up, getting Brandon Montalvo to hit into the 1-6-3 twin killing, one of three ground ball double plays turned by the Colonels. Nichols chased Hagerla in the third, but Chris Durham allows one of Hagerler's runs to score on David Zorn's two-out single to left, Justin Smith chugging around. Zorn reached base four times. Smith, meanwhile, had three hits, including a double. He only had five hits all year coming in. Tucker gets hung up in a rundown. Still, it's 5-1 to one midway through the third. Home half of the frame, Kyle Reese with a diving stop, robbing Travis Hull. An up-and-down game defensively, but Nichols made plays when they needed them most. Dicey situation here in the fourth. Two on and two gone. The Colonels have trouble with the infield pop-up as it falls into no man's land. That would load the bases, and it seemed like if there was going to be a turning point, this would be it. But Bourne gets Logan Preston to fly out lazily tonight in right, and the Colonels walk away unscathed, still up by four. How about more two-out hits here in the fifth? Tanner Vanderveer with the wall-banging double off of Josh Markle. This score sets Stevens six to one. Nichols Vanderveer came off the bench to provide two hits. Every Colonel with at least two at bats recorded at least a hit, an RBI, and/or a run. Just a complete team effort. Pretty glove work displayed. Bottom five, Langley with a bouncer to Vanderveer. The force and the pirouette by Joey Morales to double him up. Morales also provided a pair of hits and a run. Sixth inning, two runners in scoring position with one away for Reese. The tie tights offering hits sharply to right. It brings in Morales. Stevens added an RBI fielder's choice to make it 8-1. to one. UCA finally gets something going in the sixth. A hit and a walk followed by a two-out, two-run double by Montalvo, bouncing off the wall in left. It scores Chris Townsend and Braxton Phillips. We've got an 8-3 to three affair. Montalvo was the only bear to record two hits. But Justin Holt tacks on a ground-out RBI in the seventh before Bourne gets another ground ball double play as Zorn is somehow, someway able to hold the bag at first. Bourne goes eight innings, allowing three runs on seven hits. He fans a half dozen, including this punch-out of Preston to end the inning. 
Mark Fraser pitched a perfect ninth. It's a 9-3 win for the Colonels. 16 hits for Nichols. That's just a completely different uh, team that was out there on totally Saturday. Totally different. They were the aggressor. We swung the bats well. Every fastball we saw, we got a barrel on, and that was good to see. There were no lazy fly balls. There were no weak rollovers. There was some intensity in that dugout, too, and, and it was good to see. I think there was a frustrated team that was going to refuse to be beat. Boy, what a great atmosphere it was. Beautiful day. Uh, we enjoy, I enjoyed that. But championships are one on the road, and we played championship baseball on that day. It seemed like the light kind of went on because everything carried over to Sunday's finale. The team suddenly realized, hey, we, we can hit the ball a little yeah, bit. Yeah, we can. We've got some athletes, and when, you, when you're aggressive, you don't put yourself in tough moments. You don't allow yourself to get to two-strike counts. Listen, it's hard to hit in the big leagues with two strikes. So uh, if we're taking and taking and taking, then, then we're not ever going to hit. And so I think our guys understood that finally. And, uh, after you know, after a rough month or so offensively, and they they were the aggressor again on Sunday. Grant Bourne has been the tough luck loser one too many times this year. It so, always seems like he feels like he needs to be perfect. That game was the first time this year where he didn't have his best stuff, and you guys still won. He didn't, and he was. I, I felt like he was getting keyholed. I felt like that zone was really really tight. He made one or two mistakes. He left an off speed pitch up twice. And they hit a double for two RBIs and a homer, and those are three runs that they scored. And, and, and truthfully, he never does that. And that's you know. And I think that um, what was so impressive about his outing was that he kept coming back. He didn't let it. He kept his poise. He kept his composure, and kept being a leader for us on the mound. And I, I liked it. It was eight innings of really good pitch, well pitched baseball. In the crowd, you kind of sensed it at least from up in the press box after that drop pop up fell in there. Yeah. That maybe could have opened the door for the Bears, for Bourne to get that fly ball afterward and, and get out of that inning without any damage. I, I think that took the win right out of the Bears' sails. It took the win out of their sails, and every time they would score, we would come back and score right away and, and, and really also did it on Sunday. But when you can do that on the road, that says a lot about your club. Big road win for the Colonels. Sunday's a finale. Uh, loomed even larger. Uh, road series wins are tough to come by in any conference, let alone the South. And uh, you guys just uh, came out and, and gave C Central Arkansas really too much to handle. We knew Justin Cinnabotti was going to give us a chance. We had a fully loaded bullpen. I liked our opportunities with our bullpen. All we needed to do was get to four or five runs, and we were going to win the baseball game. And certainly, the, you know, it, it worked out that way, but I, I knew I know our players saw that, and they were hungry for it on Sunday. The Colonels got very aggressive on the base pass on Sunday. That approach should pay dividends in the long run. It cost him a bit on Sunday. Justin Holt led off the game with a base hit off of righty Riley Eccles. Holt stole second. But on a Darius Knight grounder to Holtz right, let's take a look at the highlights here. Justin winds up getting thrown out. Knight tried to advance while that was going on and gets doubled up on a fielder's choice. This play right here as a Holt gets hung up in the rundown and the uh, Bears wind up turning a very unconventional double play. Nichols had four runners thrown out on the base pass in this one. But top third, there would be absolutely no chance to throw out Joey Morales, the freshman shortstop going deep for the first time in his young career. A two-run shot, breaking up a scoreless tie. David Zorn was on board after a one-out infield hit. Morales coming in, hitting just a buck 90. Hopefully, that will get him going just a bit. Nichols tags Eccles for six straight hits in the inning with two on and one gone. Kyle Reese, the team's leading hitter, delivers the RBI single to right a three-run frame. And with Justin Cinebaldi coming in with an ERA of 1.01, that could very well have been enough right there. But two walks and a hit, loads of bases for the Bears. The league's leading hitter, Matt Anderson, with a chance to get UCA back in it. But Cinebaldi gets them to fly out weakly to left. That threat was extinguished right there. Cinebaldi gets some help in the fourth. Braxton Phillips gets robbed by Reese at the hot corner. The Colonels made play after play in the field in this one. A couple of walks come back to get Cinebaldi in the fifth. Chris Townsend with a two-out hit to left, chasing in Hayden Steele. The lead is cut to two. Townsend had himself a nice weekend. Cinebaldi was pulled after the fifth. But Tanner Vanderveer registered an RBI hit in the sixth to get that run back. And then the defense comes through again. Travis Hall blasts one to deep left, but Justin Smith makes it crash, a catch rather, crashing up against the wall. And then in the seventh inning, the Colonels take away another hit. This time it's Darius Knight going all out here off the bat of Tyler Langley. you got to love that and love the enthusiasm that this team brought into the final two games of this series. It really showed through in the results here as Knight celebrates with Justin Holt. Eccles goes seven-plus innings. 
before the Colonels add insurance in the eighth. Alex Tucker with a sack fly. This is deep enough. And then some pinch runner Byron Cobb would score. That would make it a 5-1 to one ball game. Mark Frazier and Robbie Petty combined for three dominant innings of relief work. Stuart Holmes comes on in the ninth. You would think it's over with his 0-4-4 ERA, but he issues a pair of walks. And with two outs, Wesley Hoover grounds a 3-2 pitch up the middle, driving in Ty Tice. That makes it 5-2, and things start getting interesting. Chris Townsend representing the potential tying run at the plate. Line drive single. Tyler Langley scores. It's 5-3. Holmes had allowed only one earned run all year. He gave up two on Sunday, but Anderson goes just two for 13 in the series with a pair of singles. Holmes induces a 4-3 ground out, and that's your ball game. Colonels winning their second road conference series and their first since the opening weekend of league play. Yeah, it was funny. We heard Coach on the MLB Network on the way home. They were talking about closers coming in in non-safe situations, not bringing the same intensity, losing the ball game. We saw it live at the, at the, in the Bear Stadium. As Stuart Holmes able to hang on in the end, but boy, the Bears made it interesting. Absolutely, uh, and you know it, it happens all of the time. Mm -hmm. It's not abnormal. He, he can't be perfect. The game can't give you easy outings all the time because it's a tough game. And I told that to Stu after the game. This is the first time in, and only the second time in his two years here that he's done that. He did the same thing at Lamar last year. And once you learn from that, you, you, you remember you have to have that edge every time. And he was lights out the rest of the year last year, and I certainly expect him to do it again. There, there's nothing wrong with him. It's simply a mindset for a closer, and, and you have to get through those days. Hey, we saw it on big league games on the way home last night. Fernando Rodney did it with Seattle. So, uh, and he wasn't the only one. It, it, it happens a lot in this game, and you just have to you know, learn from it and move on. But i tell you something. There was enough offense provided where sure. you could afford those things to happen. We can afford that to happen. When we swing the bats like we do, it seems like it's a lot easier for this club to win. And so, uh, you know, we, we did it. We played defense, and we got out of there with, you know, winning two out of three, and that's big for this, this club. And that was a big thing, I thought, was the defense. The Colonels just made play after play. And after a while, if you're Central Arkansas, you got to start figuring, well, what do we got to do here? Yeah, my, I tell you, that you can feel that from them, but at the same time, our club shows up on the last day of the week every week. And, and so it, that tells you something about this team. Uh, and, and Cinebali winning seven games on Sunday. I mean, it, it has been critical for us, and, and uh, we hope to continue to do that, and I fully expect us to. We're going to talk more in a moment, Coach. we got to take a timeout first. We'll be back in just a moment here on the Seth Thibodeau Show, presented by the Sports Medicine Center of Thibodeau Regional. You may know Thibodeau Regional was the first hospital in the region to take a leadership role in athletic safety, and they responded by developing a comprehensive sports medicine program. But did you know their certified athletic trainers assist high schools with team event coverage and that they are the region's only hospital with sports medicine fellowship trained physicians? TJ Boudreau knows they're here for athletes of all ages. Parents, coaches, and athletes know Thibodeau Regional Medical Center for expert, compassionate care. Donnie, I'm in Rouse's at least three times a week, and I want the best prices every day. Come on, Chef. Let's go shop. All right. There's got to be at least a thousand items just on this one aisle. At Rouse's, we stock more groceries than anyone else. I can see that. So what's with the tag? Best price every day. It's the Rouse's guarantee. You're getting our lowest price every day. So when I see this tag, you know you don't have to wait for a sale. I can shop any day. And get our best price every day. Rouse's. You're either local or you're not. Well, we're all about the people that we care for. At People's Health, we know that when it comes to health, what works is teamwork. Each People's Health Plan member has a team of talented professionals working together to coordinate care so our members can do what they love to do. That's what we do. We're here for you. The People's Health. People's Health, your Medicare health team. Coming back to you on the Seth Thibodeau Show, presented by the Sports Medicine Center of Thibodeau Regional. Mike Wagg and I'm with head coach Seth Thibodeau. Coach, right now we look at the Southland Conference standings. It's anybody's ball game. Like it is. It feels like that every year. And 
And I like where we're at. We're the hunger and hungry team, and we're the one that's uh, hunting down something big. And a year ago at this time, we were the team with the you know that everyone was shooting for. So uh, it, it it makes you hungry. It keeps you in that thing, and it, it makes you understand the importance of every single game. And so. I like where we're at right now. We've got to finish strong. First place, Southeastern Louisiana played out of conference this weekend. They are percentage points ahead of Northwestern State. The Demons swept New Orleans. Houston Baptist took all three at Stephen F. Austin. McNeese State hanging in the hunt. The Colonels are in sixth place, but only two and a half games out of first. Corpus Christi has won four straight. They swept Abilene Christian. SFA, Incarnate Word, and New Orleans are hurting right now. Folks, it's time for our weekly Nichols Athletics Roundup. Our own Joanna Ducrey tells us about a colonel who has received one of the Southland Conference's highest honors. After putting together one of the best individual seasons in team history, setting the colonel's single-season three-point record, and leading them to a program record for league win, the Southland Conference honored Nichols senior guard Jenny Nash as its Women's Student Athlete of the Year last week. I came here four years ago. I never imagined the kind of year I would have this year. Um, I never thought that I would be that player. And so it wasn't, obviously it was a goal to, I wanted to be like first team all academic that, by my senior year. But I never thought I would be the one to be the student athlete of the year. The fact that I did get it, I was just, I remember when I saw it, I was so shocked. It's like, I never thought that it would be me in this spot. I ran, I like told my mom, and she was just like, yes, let's go celebrate. Besides ranking in 10 of a possible 13 statistical categories in the league, Nash maintained a 3.92 GPA as a mathematics major. Along with being named Student Athlete of the Year, she was also automatically selected to the Southland Women's Basketball All-Academic First Team. Academics has always been like a really big piece for me. Like, I know that I'm here to be a student athlete, student first. My coaches, they, they put a lot of emphasis on academics as well. They always told us the three things we should be focused on is our faith, school, and then basketball. Although school and basketball are most important, Nash contributes all of her victories to her support system. My family, uh, I got two brothers. One, um, he's older than me, he played basketball. And so growing up with him, we are always competitive, and he really pushed me to like being who I am today like as far as like with basketball and just like teach me how to be a leader because I always like looked up to him I still do my younger brother he uh his name's Andrew he's got uh Christensen syndrome which is a genetic disorder and so he um he can't talk he uh he can walk sort of he's been at like most of my home games over the years and a lot of people like see him in a wheelchair and so they recognize him as my brother and uh He's actually, like, a huge inspiration for me, like, when I play, especially because I, I think of myself, like, um, he doesn't have this opportunity, and I've been blessed with the ability to have, the, like, to be able to do what I can, and so just, like, seeing him at my games and having my parents be there, too, it's, it just makes me want to play, like, as good as I can for them, for him especially. Nash is graduating in Maine but is coming back for her master's next year and will be working for the Colonels as a graduate assistant. Yeah, I think I've, I've left a pretty good legacy that I just hope that the younger girls on my team see that, like, you can start from where I was and, and get to get to this point. I hope I was a good leader to them and that uh, even, like, the academic side, that they're here to get a degree first. And that's kind of what I want to help with them next year when I'm a GA, like, be that transition for them, whether it's, like, getting their confidence, still kind of being that leader that I've been for them the past two years. Thank you so much, Joanna. We appreciate it. What a great kid uh, to have as a representative of the university. A, tr a true leader for our whole athletic department. I'm so impressed, and I've, I've appreciated watching her play the last few years. It's been a, a treat, and, and she's very motivating for everyone else in the athletic department. We need more of her on this campus. Coach, we got to take a quick time out. We'll be right back to talk more baseball here on the Seth Thibodeau Show presented by the Sports Medicine Center of Thibodeau Regional.
Back with you on the Seth Thibodeau Show, presented by the Sports Medicine Center of Thibodeau Regional. Mike Wagonheim with head coach Seth Thibodeau. Coach, a rare, rare off weekend for the Nichols baseball team. What do you do with, with no games this weekend? Well, we, we wanted to play this weekend. We couldn't find anyone in the country that matched up with our open weekend. So we, we did some research, and, you know, we, we're going to rest some arms. I think that's a, it's a golden opportunity for us to rest our stars, which is not normal. Uh, and those guys will be fresh down the back stretch of the season. So we're just going to kind of catch up a little bit, catch up academically. We had a long road trip this weekend, which we, we scheduled like that on purpose because we knew we had an off week. So uh, we're going to take advantage of, of some time off and give some guys some rest and get in that weight room and work as, and get what we can done out of it. Now the Colonels have the weekend off, but we got you covered when they return to the field on Tuesday of next week. They'll host Grambling. You can hear it live on KNSU 91.5 FM. We'll also have a live video webcast at Colonels All Access. Nichols on the road next weekend for a three-game set at McNeese. All three games will be broadcast on KTIB 640 AM. Folks, we've got to take one final break. We'll come back and wrap it up in just a moment. Our journey to patient-centered excellence is fueled by strong leadership and driven by a passionate team working together to deliver the highest quality, safest care, constantly adding more services, physicians, and technology, ensuring you have an outstanding patient experience. As a result, thousands have made us the most preferred hospital, patient-centered excellence. At Thibodeau Regional, it's not a destination. It's a journey driven by one purpose, you. Donnie, I'm in Rouse's at least three times a week, and I want the best prices every day. Come on, Chef. Let's go shop. All right. There's got to be at least a 1,000 items just on this one aisle. At Rouse's, we stock more groceries than anyone else. I can see that. So what's with the tag? Best price every day. It's the Rouse's guarantee. You're getting our lowest price every day. So when I see this tag, you know you don't have to wait for a sale. I can shop any day. And get our best price every day. Rouse's. You're either local or you're not. Closing out the Seth Thibodeau Show, presented by the Sports Medicine Center of Thibodeau Regional. Time to announce our Rouse's Student Athlete of the Week. And this week, it's Nichols women's tennis player, Isla Brock, the native of Germany, won all of her matches this past week. The Nichols women's tennis team just one win away from at least a share of a Southland Conference championship. Coach, I hope you enjoy your uh, week off. Well, uh, at least a couple days off. And I know these guys need the break right now, but going to come back for that stretch run and hopefully – uh, hunt for a title as well. Absolutely. we got a lot of great baseball ahead of us, and we are excited about the final month of the season. He's Seth Thibodeau. I'm Mike Wagenheim. We're going to talk to you again next week. Until then, take care. Today's show has been presented by the Sports Medicine Center of Thibodeau Regional, dedicated to patient-centered excellence. This program has also been sponsored by Rouse's Supermarkets. You're either local or you're not. And People's Health your Medicare health team. This has been a presentation of the Colonel Sports Network.